Meniscus root tears are unique injuries requiring special consideration and anatomic repair. The medial and lateral meniscus are pictured from above, both with terminal insertions both anteriorly and posteriorly referred to as root insertions. The lateral meniscus is more semicircular in shape than the medial meniscus. The medial and lateral menisci serve to deepen the articular surface of the tibia for reception of the femoral condyles and increase the effective surface area, thus decreasing the stress across the tibia. The menisci are made primarily of type 1 collagen and are composed of both circumferential and radial fibers which work in conjunction in distributing stress across the knee joint. The menisci function in shock absorption by undergoing elongation as load is applied, load transmission by increasing the surface area, and joint stability by increasing joint conformity. The blood supply to the meniscus comes in at the periphery via the perimeniscal capillary plexus. Blood supply to the meniscus recedes with aging. Indications for meniscal repair have traditionally been thought to be best at the periphery of the meniscus where the blood supply is best. Posterior root medial meniscus tears were originally described in a 21-year-old football player with rapidly progressive medial compartment arthritis. Little progress was made in better understanding the diagnosis and treatment of medial meniscal root tears. We have more recently had a better understanding of meniscal root tears. Studies have described lateral meniscal root tears in up to 8% of ACL tears and nearly one in five medial meniscus tears occurring at the root insertion. The posterior root is essential for absorbing hoop stress and preventing extrusion of the meniscus out of the joint, and complete root avulsion results in an inability of axial loads to be converted into hoop stresses. A bimodal age distribution has been noted with young patients suffering traumatic injuries and middle to older patients with some underlying arthrosis. Associated risk factors include increasing age, high BMI, and decreased activity level. Clinically, patients with meniscal root tears present with posterior or joint line pain, uncommon symptoms of locking or catching as with other meniscus tears. Many can recall a minor traumatic injury. Numerous studies have shown a dramatic increase in stress resulting from total meniscectomy. Increased stress is the result of decreased contact area in the involved compartment. MRI is the study of choice in evaluating meniscal injuries. Extrusion on coronal MRI of more than 3 millimeters is consistent with a meniscal root tear, but has also been linked to increased articular cartilage loss and osteophyte formation. Other reports in the literature describe rapidly progressive arthritis within the medial compartment following complete avulsion of the posterior root of the medial meniscus. Biomechanical studies show that a posterior root meniscal tear has the same effect on contact pressures as a total meniscectomy. Repair of the posterior root insertion has been shown to return peak contact pressures to normal. Radial tears adjacent to the posterior root insertion have similar effect on contact pressures when compared to root tears. Progressive degenerative arthritis has been described and studies suggest that up to one in four medial meniscal tears are root avulsions or radial root equivalent tears. In situ repair of complete radial tears is performed by restoring the integrity between the terminal end of the meniscus and the underlying tibial plateau. An appropriate amount of tension is necessary to restore normal stress absorption to the meniscus and the involved compartment. Root avulsions and variations of radial tears have similar effects on contact pressures. The effect of radial tears is similar to a posterior root avulsion and in situ repair has been shown to restore the ability of the meniscus to absorb hoop stress. Authors have shown progression of arthritis with partial meniscectomy in the treatment of root tears. Posterior root repair achieves better subjective outcome scores and less progression of arthritis at four years than partial meniscectomy. Worse clinical outcomes are associated with repairs performed in compartments with advanced level cartilage change. The following is a surgical technique video of medial meniscal root repair. 
This is a surgical video of a 42-year-old active woman with left posterior knee pain of six months duration that failed to improve and ultimately underwent an MRI. Her diagnostic arthroscopy reveals a complete radial tear adjacent to the posterior root insertion of her medial meniscus. A determination of repair was made and debridement of the root remnant is being carried out. Next, the root is determined to be mobile enough to undergo repair. Additional debridement at the site of the root remnant is made. Adjacent cartilage is then denuded down to the subchondral bone at the anticipated repair site. Because of this technique, a repair site just medial to the terminal end of the meniscus is chosen. A curette is used to debride the overlying articular cartilage in the area of the anticipated repair. Those articular cartilage fragments are then removed and the repair site is inspected to make sure it's been completely prepared. Once again, the terminal end of the meniscus is verified to be reducible at the repair site. Now a suture passing device is being utilized to pass a purse string suture just medial to the terminal end of the medial meniscus. Here we see the suture being passed and retrieved. The free limbs of the suture are then passed through the loop to achieve a purse string configuration. A second purse string suture is now being passed just medial to the first to provide secure fixation at the terminal end of the meniscus. Here we can see after both purse string sutures have been passed that control of the terminal end of the medial meniscus has been achieved. A standard ACL drill guide is then used to pass a guide pin exiting at the repair site. A suture passer is now being utilized to pass the free limbs of the repair suture through the tibial tunnel and traction on the suture is verified to fully reduce the meniscus at the repair site. The following is a surgical video of a 32-year-old gentleman who underwent ACL reconstruction by another physician and continued to have lateral and posterolateral knee pain. Of note, his MRI was felt to be inconclusive for lateral meniscal pathology. At the time of arthroscopy, the patient's ACL graft was noted to be intact. A complete avulsion of the posterior root of the lateral meniscus was encountered. In addition, evidence of a partial prior meniscectomy of the posterior horn was seen. The terminal end of the lateral meniscus was noted to be completely avulsed from its native insertion on the tibia. The native insertion was then carefully debrided with a small oscillating shaver with careful attention to avoid damage to the ACL graft. The terminal end of the lateral meniscus is then gently debrided of devitalized tissue. A commercially available suture passing device is then used to pass two purse string sutures through the terminal end of the lateral meniscus. An ACL drill guide is used to pass a guide pin at the desired insertion point for the lateral meniscus and a suture passing device is then used to advance the free limbs of the suture through the tibia. Adequate reduction of the terminal end of the lateral meniscus is noted. The free limbs of the suture are then tied over a button on the tibia and the repair site is visualized arthroscopically to ensure adequate reduction.